Double digit day 10, baby. Didn't think I was gonna make it. Didn't think we were gonna make it. But look at us, motoring right along. I decided I'm not gonna sell my boat. After a long deliberation last night, many fantasies, I'm not ready to sell it. And in celebration of my 10th day, I'm making pancakes. Everybody's invited. Come, come and get them hot and fresh, mid-Atlantic. We're going six knots. Motor's running, just ripping. Trying to, trying to get to the Azores, man. Just, just get me there, you know. Maybe we continue motoring. We have four full days worth of worth of motoring that we can do, fuel-wise. Um, and we have about, well, it, it depends on how fast we go. We have anywhere from seven to nine days of travel. It's 950 miles away, so. I definitely sleep best when the motor's running. I also gave myself a haircut and a beard cut. I haven't looked at it yet. I used the reflection of the window as my mirror, so it might be very horrible. I left the back tail. I'm a fan of rat tails. Big fan. Also, there is a boat in front of us, a sailboat. I just woke up from a little nap two hour nap. I dreamt. Dreamt out I was with a, a bunch of women. Um, and we were doing all sorts of fun things. Nothing sexual, just fun. We we're playing games. Running up and down stairs, we kept bumping into the same people in these stairways. It was very interesting. Anyways. Sometimes we make good meals for ourselves. Ah, yes, baby. Quinoa, beets, um, whatever that um, squash is called. And huevos, huevos, amigos, huevos. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. Day 11. Day 11. Thorne has been operating for 36 hours now. We have probably five knots of wind in total. Um, but I just, and last night we had zero knots of wind at a few points. Um, so I just decided it's pro probably best um, mostly for the fatigue of the crew to leave the motor running, let mo let the thorn do let the thorn do some work because he hasn't done much work this trip. So, Th so thorn is picking up the slack. My battery died, and we have some exciting news as well. I have been given as a gift mushrooms, a mushroom block, and look. They're sprouted. It's uh, North Spore. North Spore Mushroom Company. Um, blue oysters. Blue oyster mushrooms. I'm having blue oyster mushrooms in the middle of the sea. Oysters of the land. Pretty exciting. Very excited, very excited. I'm gonna let them grow for another half a day but thank you very much kate and jesse for that beautiful gift mid-atlantic oyster mushrooms ain't nothing better anyways ciao <clears throat> it's amazing this is uh every sailor's dream following wind and seas we're going we're going about five knots downwind, dead downwind, more or less. I just came on deck because I was looking for a ship. I have a, I have my AL, my AIS alarm is going off, and uh, it says that there's a ship seven miles off to my starboard side. Uh, 
I don't see it anywhere. Seven miles is a bit long, a bit far away. I was just doing some writing and uh, thinking about uh, how do I express this? Thinking about life, my life, and other people's lives, and other people and and culture, my culture and other people's culture specifically, and how um, you know there's good and bad parts to each culture, depending on how you view it, what your cultural framework is, and it's alarming. Part of this conversation is coming up because of a book that I'm reading called The Wayfinders by Wade Davis. Um, but in this book, he talks about how we are losing cultural diversity. Um, everyone's becoming, or a lot of, majority of the world is becoming westernized. We're losing a lot of native tongues, um, which is a big deal because these cultures have been around for thousands and thousands of years with very fundamentally strong, tied to the land, sustainable practices. And this, what some would call new culture, the English speaking culture has been, you know, running rampant for the past maybe thousand years, but really running rampant in the past 300 years with the whole idea of modernization and Western, you know, um, colonialization and all of that, it's really taken over um, to the point where all these other cultures are getting squashed. And he, he relates it to biodiversity of the planet and how, um, you know, humanity needs diverse cultures to sustain whatever coming um, hardships we're, we're bound to face. Um, and the, the fact that people are signing on to the Western philosophy or that type of culture, modern culture, um, it's alarming because there's some real negative sides to this culture. One of them being, you know, where this, one of the sole reasons why we have such devastation climactically at the moment. Um, and it's another reason why there's so much cultural destruction because, you know, people see, oh, there's this computer, they want to be a part of it. Um, and there's this almost lie that's being told to people that they can easily join the Western system and have a car and a family and a wife and, uh, and a nice, nice place to live. And that's really not the case. They give up their cultures work, which work for them and their family for generations to try the Western culture and they arrive in these cities and they find out that they're broke and unable to do anything. So, and the most important part of all this is the stories in these cultures, the, uh, the understanding and the wisdom in these cultures that what the Western mind may not be able to comprehend, which I think is the most interesting and thought-provoking part of this whole thing is there's challenges that humanity is going to have to pay, face over the next thousands of years that will require experienced wisdom. And perhaps within these cultures that are currently being extinguished and, go and going extinct, there's the solution. And because this young new culture is coming in with all this shiny computer screens, we um, lose that wisdom when it dies. There's no more ability to overcome. There's no more tapping into their stories and their heritage and their um, thought processes and their ways of being to find the correct solution for the future problems. So it's almost as if we need to consider from a human humanity standpoint, 
how do we create the most longevity for ourselves as a species? Because this isn't really a conversation about you and I. We'll probably be that either way. But of our children's children's children, they're going to need some some wisdom. Um, and right now, the wisdom in the American culture and the Western culture in general is fairly bleak. They have science and they have the ability to fly to the moon. So we could destroy the earth and fly away to some other rock somewhere. I think it's a little bit naive and foolish to think that we do that and kind of a little outrageous. Why not just protect this Eden we were born into? So this whole book got me really thinking deeply about what the hell I was doing um, with my life and that there's this urgent problem that needs to be addressed. And uh, that's how I generally am. So I'm talking about it now, because I have nobody to talk to about it. It's just too much to type on a little screen to text people about, so. <clears throat> Wayfinders, The Wayfinders by Wade Davis. Downwind sailing, downwind sailing. You don't always get days like this. I was thinking about running the motor all day. And then my friend Jesse said to me, Tim, three and a half knots is good. And I was like, wait, it is, it's okay. And then I look at the speed after waking up from a nap, no, oh, and five knots. Increíble. Anyways, we'll discuss this more later on. I'm not sure I've shown you guys bilge cheese. We cut this cheese uh, over a month ago, and we put it in oil, and it's still good. It's just sitting in olive oil. I'm blown away, personally. This makes me do nothing but smile. Pure smiles. Three massive sails. <laughs> ah. Heaven. We're in heaven, baby. As much volume as we can get on this boat. Está rico el mate. Andando. Backing up the first footage. Part one of an excellent two part series. Bermuda, two is ours. It's so beautiful. It's a very complicated setup. We've got a pulley back here, or they call it a block in sailing. That runs up to that one. All right, we can't run it off the track because it's too close. So we have to run it outside to a pulley, then to the winch, then to the uh, locker. This main sail has a preventer on it from, from flying forward. Then we've got the spinnaker on this side, the spinnaker pole on this side holding this bigger, bigger jib out because uh, the direction of the wind is pretty much that way. You can see it sort of on this uh, wind vane, Angela. So it needs to sort of, the bottom corner needs to be held out. Otherwise it'll just start caving in on the red and blue sail. And the reason the red and blue sails on that side is because that's in the shadow of the main sail and that's a lighter wind sail. So that lighter wind sail can tolerate a little bit less wind in the shadow of the main sail. Hello! Wow! Hello! Monstrous animal.
I was just scared that they were going to eat my boat. I'm in the middle of nowhere. Don't they get it? I think they liked the music I was playing. Oh man. What a day. Day 11. I think it's day 11. Oh, well, we're going six and a half knots at some points. We're ranging between five and a half to six and a half knots. The winds have picked up a bit. Maybe, maybe we've got 12, 15 knot winds. That, that was the forecast. So I think I reefed the main. Um, I think I'm gonna leave the other two puppies up there. <sighs> Very intense seeing those <laughs> large marine mammals. <laughs> Just made me feel so ins insignificant and small. And of course I read all these articles beforehand about orcas ripping rudders off people's boats and uh, I was just frightened. I was more frightened than, I was awed really. I was awed by the whole experience, but I was, I had adrenaline. There was adrenaline involved. Uh, hopefully I can sleep tonight. I likely will be able to. But we're just gonna cruise along. Hopefully we can keep this pace all night and uh, we'll be in Azores in no time. Day 12, day 12, unbelievable. Here we are, rainy, drizzly I should say. Drizzly morning, drizzly morning in paradise. 5.8 knots, not bad. Not bad at all, 5.4. It, it fluctuates. Sometimes we get up to six. Moving right along. And uh, yeah, that's uh, the story. This morning I woke up and I took the third, um, I guess you could call it a spinnaker, a kite sail. Uh, I took that one off because we were uh, reaching too much the wind was coming too much from our uh, starboard side and it was blowing the um, other jib off so i took the little one off i took the spinnaker off and i moved the bigger jib to the other side and now we're on a broad reach broad reach heading pretty much due east at the moment i uh took a little bit more north when i had the chance downwind northerly north it was north east northeast i took downwind east northeast and now i'm taking east on a broad reach to uh come back a bit a bit more uh along the route that i had charted out and yeah other than that things are good look at this richness oyster mushrooms It's amazing. I'm ecstatic. Now I'm gonna eat them. Tenemos delfines. Donde están? Ahí. Ahí hay una. Bonita. Boom, gotta. Boom, gotta. Day 12, ripping dolphins, delfines. Going downwind very fast and averaging about five and a half to six knots. Can't complain, can't complain. That's it, day 12, that's a wrap people. That's a wrap, close up shop, we're going home. Day 13, ah. My butt's getting sore. Ugh. Feels like there's pimples on my butt or something. But it's just too much shitting. There's actually shitting involved too. I'm pooping. I'm pooping again.
but there's just too much sitting on this hard surface. I started sitting on a pillow, moving up in the world. And it is, it's day 13, lucky number 13. Um, not much to say other than I am just fascinated by the fact that this wind just keeps going. It's just blowing directly at the Azores. All I gotta do is put big sail up and it just takes me there. I'm not doing much, except for last night. Last night, I was fiddling. I was fiddling with the autopilot and uh, with uh, Prawn and Angela, both of them. Both of them, I don't know if it was my fatigue or if it was that they were just in a bad mood, but they just did not want to point, point where I wanted them to point. Having a weird problem. My batteries aren't charging that well. I mean, they're charging. I've got 12 volts, but it just, they should be at like 12, three at least. We have pretty much full sun. Um, so I turned the autopilot off because I don't really want it to go below 12. And I'm using the wind vane, Angela. Um, I think I think I may have damaged the batteries um, by using the water maker on them. I wonder if the water maker is just too too demanding. The other thing is, I wonder if I did start it once on the house bank. So I don't know what it is. I don't know. It's just a little unnerving because I just spent $800 on 400 amp hours of battery. And to see it already sort of functioning not so great, it, it's a little frustrating. And we're not going very fast either. It's a hard day. It's a hard day. We're only going four knots. Three and a half. Three and a half to four knots. I didn't want to drop below four. And I've been trying a lot of things in my power to, to stay above four. I have one more solution and that's to go on a broad reach instead of downwind. And I might try it, I'm just exhausted because last night I didn't really sleep that well, so. That's how it goes. It's not always pretty out here. It's pretty, but it's not always fun. So, I'm still smiling because I think it's hilarious. I love a good little suffer fest. <laughs> oh, my day was going really bad. Day 13. <laughs> Look at that beautiful fish! Unbelievable! Oh, thank the good Lord. At least, at the very least, I'm gonna eat good tonight. Oh my God. Anyways, now I've gotta cut this puppy up. Oh. I feel very grateful for this. Cut it into steaks. And uh, I'm gonna make some soup as well. Oh, lifted my spirits. I feel very grateful. Hard to believe it. Day 14 and we are flying! I don't know, yesterday was a very depressing day for me. I don't know what it was. Minus the fish, I think it was probably because there was big waves. I know what it was. There was these bigger waves, bigger, not big, bigger waves and no wind, very light wind. And uh, man, we just couldn't go anywhere. We were only going three and a half, four knots. And I was miserable. I can't believe it. Like being in the doldrums must be horrible. I don't know how I'll emotionally be able to take it. Um, but now we're going almost seven knots, 6.9, 6.8.
surfing the waves downwind. It's freaking incredible. Directly in the direction we want to go. It's like, this is a sailor's wet dream right here. Pardon my, pardon my language. I have to start considering taking some sail down, believe it or not. I don't know if I want to believe it. But it's starting to get a little frisky out here. Yep, we got to take some sail down, I think. Ugh. So I've been following this protocol that my friend Joaquin told me to follow, which is if I feel any hesitancy at all, any sort of hesitancy to change a sail, I should do it immediately. Um, and it's served me well so far because I've I felt like, oh, maybe I should change this sail. And then I changed the sail and Five minutes later, the wind picks up, and uh, it's good I changed it because I would have been fighting with higher winds removing the sail. Um, this time, you know how I just said, I said a minute ago, oh, maybe I should change the sail. This is probably the first time that I'm actually not going to. Um, I just was watching it for another few minutes, and you see how all of a sudden the clouds have cleared. And it looks like what just happened was there was like a little band of uh, pressure or something passed over me and it's now cleared up and the winds are already easing off a bit. So in the uh, forecast, it said that we were supposed to get um, periods of gust that could go up to 22 knots. And I think that that's what I was just experiencing was one of those periods of gusts um, of, of higher winds around 20 something knots. Um, and now it's easing off again. So throughout the day today, we're supposed to be experiencing something like 12 to 17 knots of, of normal wind with gusts up to 22. And um, that's pretty much, 22 is probably the limit for this, for this arrangement. Um, but it seems to be easing off. I'm not surfing as many waves and losing control of the boat as much. So I think I'm okay. Beautiful morning, beautiful morning. We love it when we go fast. The people are all happy when we go fast. The crew members are happy, everybody's happy. When we go slow, everybody's miserable. It's an ugly little situation. Don't be on Pepito when the boat is going slow. Day 14, we're still cruising! And I've created a solution. I've got this little generator. I'm uh, using the battery charger connection for it to charge the batteries because the batteries are still not charging super well in the sun. Um, and I wanna get them to a nice full charge, um, especially because in the coming days, we're gonna be cloudy. And also because I need to make water, um, just basically to keep the water, the water maker clean. It needs to be run every three days. It's already been four days. So I wanna try and get the batteries up to at least 12.3 um, so that I can, I'll leave this on and I'll run the water maker at the same time. I tried uh, connecting my short power terminal, my short, my short power connector into this generator. And for some reason it read uh, reverse polarity, which I don't understand because everything's wired by me. I wired it all, all in correctly. So it's, I'm wondering if maybe it's something to do with, uh, something to do with the generator or the power voltage maybe. I'm, I'm not 100% sure, but I, I don't have the internet to do some investigation. So for now, I'm just going to do it this way. I just found the problem with the batteries. The negative connection from the charge controller to the battery bank. Um, the connector was not connected properly. So the charge controllers were showing light, but they were showing that they were just in the in the, um, you know, the reserve stage. They weren't actually actively absorbing. The batteries weren't absorbing. Um, 
And that's because they weren't connected. Jeez. Jeez, Louise. It's very wavy out here. Going five and a half knots. Sometimes, wow, sometimes seven knots. Maybe I should slow down. Anyways, that was the problem. I would say around noon or so today, I changed changed the sails because we were going at eight knots and we were surfing the waves. And when we were catching the surf, we were, we were going eight knots and it just felt a little too out of control, to be honest. The autopilot couldn't keep up. The battery system was on the fritz. Everything was just psycho. It was psycho mode. Everything's a bit calmer now and the winds have calmed down. It's still, we've still got some breaking waves around and things like that. So I'm a little hesitant to put up more sail, but earlier in the video, in another video, you could see how we were swaying a huge amount back and forth. And I almost feel like that's because we don't have the support of big sails anymore. So now that the winds have died down a bit, the, the sails aren't sort of counteracting the, the nonsense of the waves. See, doing a lot of this bobbing back and forth. Makes a mess of the inside. That's what I don't like. So I'm considering it, considering putting some more sail back up. It's always better to be hesitant on that side of things than to be hesitant on the other side. Much more balanced. That was it. Needed bigger sails. Now it's not flying all over the place in here. I would say it's day 14 and I'm finally learning how to sail. There's the fish soup from yesterday. Beautiful chunks of fish, potatoes, and cabbage. Put a little coconut, coconut milk, coconut oil, bay leaves, and curry, and a little a little bit of the uh, cayenne pepper. Day 15! Pretty amazing. Never thought I'd make it this far. Okay, maybe I thought I would make this far a little bit, but man, we're actually going. We've just been out here bobbing for 15 days, people. Unbelievable. It, it's, it's, it's quite cool. I'm very pleased. I'm uh, heating up the soup again, and it's a dreary, dreary day, but we made good progress last night, albeit a little bit off course, um, but it was a comfortable night. I slept, I woke up at 12, because I set an alarm just to make sure our course was okay, and the course was okay. And we continued a little bit off course, but not bad. So we've got a cloudy day and supposedly there's uh, a front coming. Supposedly my last two days, Thursday, Friday, are going to be heinous 30 mile an hour, 30 knot gusts, um, general speeds of around 20 knots. So it's going to be, it's going to be not so fun, <clears throat> seven to eight foot swell. So it's, it's gonna be a mission the, the last few days here. Day 15, spinnaker pole broke again. This time I lost the other end. It uh, got ripped out of my hands and I had too big of a sail to point up wind and get up to it in time. Otherwise, I, and I would've just, by the time I changed sails and everything, I would've lost it completely and, you know, just wasn't worth it turning around for, so. 
Now I'm trying to make another fix. My last fix held. My last fix has been doing good. So I'm using a piece of stainless that I have here and I'm just gonna extend it a bit and then I'm gonna shim it in this, in this gap and uh, just extend it a little bit so that it has the length to reach the boom, reach the, the, foot, uh, the foot of the sail properly and always an adventure. We love adventure. The people love adventure. The poor spinnaker pole. It's been getting beaten. I'm very sorry, Miss Jen. I'm gonna need I'm gonna need a spinnaker pole sponsor, I think. Somebody who knows how to make a strong, sturdy spinnaker pole for idiots like me. So that's the story today. My mom sent me a text message probably four or five days ago. It was in the middle of a of a little squall that I was having. She said, do you ever get bored out there? And <laughs> I, I don't think so. There's, especially if you know, you're, you're a faulty, a faulty uh, repairman like I am, in the sense that there's always something to fix that either wasn't installed properly the first time or um, was broken because of uh, error. Uh, yeah, I keep myself perfectly busy. <laughs> All right, since uh, stainless is a lot harder to drill through, I drilled through one side of the tube and you can see it in there, I drilled through it. Just, this is pretty much just to hold, hold the stainless in place. Um, it's shimmed out with a bit of wood. And now I'm just gonna duct tape it. My good friend, duct tape. And it'll be uh, sufficient, I think. All right, so for this, I got this piece of, um, I don't know what this shackle's called exactly, but it's a quick release. And I found this bolt that works in my kit and it screws in. So all I have to do is I'm just gonna put some thread locker. The first this system didn't work, so now I've got this going on. Locking carabiner, aluminum, with one of these clips. Test two. Okay. It's far, it's far from perfect, but it's doing the trick much better than not having one at all. So it's disappointing because it's not adjustable now. So it's pretty much that length, um, but it seems pretty sturdy. I think it's gonna hold and it'll keep the sail out a bit more and not flap it so much. Less risk of damaging a sail this way. So yeah, pretty content. Good little project for the morning. Been a wild one. Been, we've been cruising. We've been going like five, six knots consistently all day. Um, I have put up the small head sail and I have a second reef in the main. Recently, We've been getting these like wild waves that come from our uh, port side and it's been wreaking havoc, wreaking havoc. And I think it's sort of like a uh, signal from mother nature as to what's to come. Chaos, pure, pure and utter chaos. <laughs> I'm considering prepping the coffee cups now because, oh mama, I think I'm in for a bit of an exciting adventure here. The boat has just been going out of nowhere. And we have our normal waves that are following us from the winds that are behind us. But then these, these waves that come from the side are just killers. There are these moments out here where it's just deep, immense fear. Like, at least for me, I... <laughs> It's scary. It's scary. I think I think too much about the whole fact that nobody can come get me quickly. And I think about bobbing around in the ocean. And I think about my mast falling down or being stuck out here. And, oh man, it's easy, so easy to get caught up in it, in the fear. 
And I, I, I saw myself this afternoon just being scared because of these frantic waves. And man, at a certain point, you just gotta let it go. <laughs> you just gotta trust, trust in the boat and trust in yourself because otherwise just get so tormented, so tormented. I just took a deep breath. What I did is I, I reefed the mainsail uh, down to a, the second reef point and um, we're still going the same speed but everything's a little bit less insane. So that's good. And uh, I thought that and I was overworking the autopilot a little bit and I've just been thinking about the future. The coming two days, it'll be cloudy. We won't get a lot of battery and the autopilot's gonna be working really hard. So I've been stressed about using the autopilot but I've really needed it right now. So it's a lot of things just making me stressed, making me scared. But, um, I think it's all gonna work out. I hope it's all gonna work out. It'd be a real bummer if I died. Real bummer. I wouldn't be upset, but I, I, would, I would probably feel like an idiot as I was going to probably heaven. I'll probably go to heaven. Anyways, that's it. Muito, muito bom dia, galera. Muito bom. Bem-vindo a Papita. A gente está cocinando café amanhã. E... Sim, a gente está feliz. Um, dia 16. 16? Ai, Deus meu. Anyways. I'm still learning Portuguese, and uh, it's not very easy to do. <laughs> Day 16! <laughs> We're still moving! We're still going! We're following the lines! We're following the dots! We're rocking and we're rolling! The gimbal's broken on the stove. The gimbal's been broken on the stove pretty much since day one. It's one thing I forgot to videotape. That's gonna be having to be fixed in Flores. It is a gorgeous morning. Bit breezy. Bit stiff of a breeze. But it is just splendid. Beautiful. All right. We jibed. Jibed about an hour and a half ago. I just got up from a nap. Something's in my eye. And we're cruising six knots, six noodles. About 200 miles from, from Flores. And it's pretty wild. We're really doing it. We're really doing it, people. Um, so basically, I'm just gonna keep sailing. I'm just gonna sail my way to Flores. Well, there's a good chance I'm gonna have to be hand steering tonight. Mr. Braun. <laughs> Mr. Braun's just not, not cut out for the job. Keeps throwing, keep, it keeps getting thrown off. The boat keeps getting whacked out and then we're on a beam reach and then we're healing over like crazy and it, it becomes psycho. Um, so he's good everyone, he's good now. You know, it'll be good for a while and then all of a sudden something will happen and it'll just get out of whack. So usually it's like you get side swiped by a wave and then um, that wave will sort of throw off the course of the boat too much for him to recuperate. So it's a little unfortunate, but I'll be able to sleep when I'm dead. Anywho. Damn. I've been trying to make this coffee and it just keeps falling over. 
The hardship is real, people. Very real. Here we go. Here we go. Now Prawn's got to fight back. Fight for survival, Prawn. I'm trying to make coffee, man. Fight, Prawn. Keep going. Keep going. He's going to lose it. Here we go. Keep going, Prawny. Coffee. Oh, this poor little coffee. It's never gonna get made. This is it, live action, people. <laughs> live action. Stay hard, Prawn. Prawn and I have uh, decided we'd switch on and off, so I'm out here with Prawn. There's a rainbow. I think Flores is somewhere up there, right where the rainbow ends. And uh, that's that's it. It's going to be an exciting little mission. It's going to be 36 hours of non-stop action, baby. Here we go. I may not see you guys much more. Day 16! <laughs> what a wonderful day. Finally, a test from the gods. A full rainbow! We got a full rainbow. I hope you can see it. Straight into the portal we go, people. Woo! We just got walloped by a nasty squall. Lightning bolts flying everywhere. Woo! The hell of a ride, that one. <laughs> I'm hove too. We've heaven too, people. Completely hove too. It rained on me a lot, and I was scared of the lightning bolts because they were everywhere. And I think I think it's passing soon. Ugh. Man, the boat is human. Good morning, people. Day seventeen. Day seventeen. It is definitely not underwear weather anymore. It is chilly willy out. And it was a hard night. Oh God, it was a hard night. Sleepless. Lots of hand steering. Lots of rain and lightning. Lots of wind. Lots of waves. It's good though. And today you can look around. The waves have calmed down, the wind calmed down. I was actually able to get an hour of sleep just now. I just changed my clothes before I went to bed. Now I'm all bundled up on deck, making sure Prawn's doing his thing. And that is the story. We, we are, we're within firing distance, I would say. We're probably close to 100 and, 150, 130 miles away. 130. 115 miles from the Azores. If we had, yeah, we're gonna need 24 hours. So one more night out here. Probably arrive first thing in the morning, Friday morning. It'll probably be exactly 18 days. There's a real peace, real peace right now. Big undulating waves. The wind's blowing. It's pretty cool. Timmy's steering. I think the waves have sort of set up into their into their rhythm a bit more. It's been a lot more frantic, but now they're sort of much more I wouldn't say melodic, but heavy and dense. Whereas earlier they were much like more finicky and lively and difficult to work with. These they're much more easy to work with. And it allows the boat to go faster too. Going about five and a half knots. But just these little sails. This dark and stormy up front and this fully reefed. 
Well, this could be it. The last sunset of the trip. It was an interesting day. Day 17, they call it. The batteries are very low, but Prawn is still working. I'm being mean. I'm being mean to my boat. But I needed a little nap and uh, I needed to cook some food. The weather has calmed down a bit. We'll see what happens overnight. I'm expecting to be up most of the night. Um, probably because at a certain point, the batteries won't be able to tolerate any more of Kron's whining. So I'll have to get up and steer and then I'll just end up steering into port. And Flores, as long as there's no craziness like last night and everything goes as planned, that'll be it. Some call it destiny, some call it fate, some call it luck, some call it coincidence, whatever it is. We are close. And the winds are right, minus the fact that they're light. We're heading downwind directly to Flores. And it is day 19. The people are happy. We made it through the night. I actually slept most of the night. The wind must have died off. I think I woke up around two in the morning and the wind was pretty much dead. So I decided to start hanking some bigger sails up. Now we have two big, big old sails flying in the breeze and I've got a pot of coffee on. I've got the fishing line out. Um, and I'm just going to savor these last moments of wind and solitude. It was a good quarantine. Okay. Thorn is with us now. Mr. Thorn. Still don't see land. It's a beautiful morning. But the winds are not espectacular. No, no están aquí en realidad. Esa, esa vela aquí está solo para parar la girada. Y si, sí, estamos a gente llegando. A gente está llegando. A gente está llegando. Land ho! I don't know if you can see it. There's land. <laughs> Oh, incredible. Agora sí, mi galera. Oh, oh. Super beautiful. Tasozinha. It's just a tiny little island all by itself. It's so cute. I want to live there. I want to live there already. I want to become a Florezeño. Oh my god. Joy! Pure joy! Oh. It feels like it's taking forever, but we're really getting close now. We're only five miles away. 3.9 miles away, actually. The port's right over there. <laughs> Not a bad spot. <laughs> <laughs> 